Hi, and welcome to the instructions for M plus demonstration number one, running M plus basic. Now, similar to most software, using M plus has some unique features that you will get accustomed to in order to maximize your efficient use of it. I often compare using M plus to driving a Ferrari. Now, I used to have a little Nissan Juke, and no, I do not have a Ferrari now. But if I did, I can imagine it would be quite a change to go from a Juke to a Ferrari. The first step of learning to use a Ferrari, just like learning to use M+, is learning how to initialize it, get into the system, getting it started, and uh, getting the engine on. So it's kind of what we did. We, end, we, we went through and uh, entered uh, commands to get us to the remote desktop, and then we entered M+. We downloaded all of our files from Canvas, and now we're all set to go. We don't yet have the rules of the road, but this is a very good first step. So after you've logged into the Sunfire 8 remote desktop and you've set up your folder in My Documents with all the necessary files, um, you'll be ready to go. In your own applications, you'll need to prepare these files and put the syntax and data in the single fo folder. But for this workshop, I have done this. Let me show you where I have it. Um, again, I have to go make sure I'm on the remote desktop. And I have set up my folders right here. So there are my files. Let's take a minute and talk about what these files are. These are files for a particular study called the McNulty study. And so I have two data files. One is a .dat file and one is a SPSS data file. The .dat file is uniquely structured for use with M+. It's called an ASCII file format, short for American Standard Code for Information Inter Exchange. M plus cannot read in data from Excel or SPSS. There, there, you can uh, read data in from a few other formats, but this is typically what I have used. It has to be something like a .dat file. So let's open up this .dat file and take a look at what it looks like. Each record is a separate row. Each variable is separated by some type of delimiter, which in this case is um, a space. It also can be separated by a comma, such as a, with a CSV file. These types of files are called free format files when reading them into M+. You can also use formatted files, but I'm not going to discuss that in this workshop. If you have the need to use formats or formatted files, please reach out to me and I'll be glad to help. Now notice also that the top row does not contain the variable names. This is a common mistake when preparing the, the .dat file. So if you have problems with reading data in, start by looking at your .dat file. Okay, so that's enough for this file for now. So let me downsize it and go back to the list of files. All right, so we have the data set. This is the SPSS data set. So it's gonna contain exactly the same information as what was in the .dat file. We also have a couple of out files and a couple of INP files. So I'm going to look at the INP files first. There's the basic INP file. It's probably going to have some trouble. Yeah, it doesn't know how to open it. So instead of doing that, um, I'm going to go to my M plus application and I'm going to open it there. All right, so there is my INP file. Notice that I have all 10 commands listed here. Title, data, variable, define, analysis, model, plot, output, save data, and Monte Carlo. Now I'm not using define, I'm not using model, output, save data, or Monte Carlo. And that's fine. I, I can include those there as a, just as a statement, just a placeholder, or I can even omit them. I don't really need to include them if I'm not using them. But that just shows you that I can include all 10 of them in my syntax file. All right, so let's start with the title. The title is, I have all of these all in caps. Now that's not necessary, but I like to do that in order to be able to, to make a distinction between my commands 
and subcommands and comments. In this case, this is workshop one, and I have some descriptive information there. That's really very valuable to always use comments in your syntax in order to, for you to be able to reference it in the future so you know exactly what this is doing. All right, so then I have a data statement where I have the file name and the format. I have a variable statement where I tell M plus the names of the variables. I also have a subcommand called missing, which tells M plus how I would have coded missing values. Like I said, I haven't defined any new variables. I'm doing an analysis called type equals basic, and that doesn't do anything but provide me with descriptive statistics. And I also am asking it to do some plots, and these are just basic, um, these are basic plots of the sample data and no more than that. All right, I'm not going to run that just yet, but I also want to open my other one, which is a regression file. It looks a little bit different. It's a, a syntax for regression, so I have a few additional pieces of information and commands there. All right, what else do we have? We have INP files, we have out files. I've labeled them as canvas out. What will happen when you run and plus is that it will show, it will rename the output exactly as the input, except for it will use the suffix dot iout. So you would be able to tell the difference between what you ran and what I provided. I changed this input canvas in there. So we've got, okay, so we've got, let's see, we've got the DAT, we've got two INPs, we've got two OUTs, we've got an SAV, which is the SBSS data set. I have a syntax file, and then I have two out files um, from SPSS as well. In addition, I have one um, data um, test document here, and that is provided in the event that you're not able to run SPSS using these other files. Okay, so that kind of goes through everything that we have, and I invite you to go through and look through the, the data files at this time. So take a moment, make sure you have them all downloaded and in the same folder, and then look at their file top types so they know what's what. Okay, now we are ready. In your M plus workshop one instructions, go to the first set of instructions called demo number one, M plus basic. Step one basically tells you to do exactly what we just did. So if you did that, you can skip it. Now let's go to step two and take a look at the syntax. So let's open up the basic syntax. So as I mentioned before, M plus has 10 commands that are the headings for developing syntax to designate the unique features for your model. When you type these followed by a colon, the font turns blue automatically. Although M plus has a limited scope uh, syntax generator, I recommend having an example syntax and the user's guide nearby whenever you work with M plus. I have a couple of resources in Canvas that you should refer to as you're working with syntax. Here's one of them. It's the summary of the M plus language. The other one is the user's guide. The summary of the M plus language contains the summary of the commands, options, and settings. So for each of the commands, like the title command and the data command, it provides some in, a lot of additional information. And in the right-hand column here, it provides the default settings for each of the subcommands. And I recommend that you have this available to you whenever you're working on your syntax. All right, now let's go back to M plus. Here's our syntax for the basic uh, in McNulty Syntax Basic. And as you can see, there's a title, a data, a variable, a define, an analysis, model, plot, output, save data, and Monte Carlo. And I even have a comment here. If I were you doing a more uh, complex model, I would want to tell in plus what the variable names were, but I'm not. And so I am uh, I have this statement starting with a, an explanation point, and that exclamation point says that that is a comment. I have a missing value statement because if I have any missing values, they are not 
uh, coded as a blank or a dot, they are coded as a negative 99. And we'll talk about how to do that later. My analysis is type equals basic. If you looked at the earlier version of this video, um, you might have seen that there was no semicolon there, but I caught that, so now I have a semicolon. All right. Um, every command must end in a semicolon. M plus is not case sensitive, but I do use the block letters for the commands, and that's just my personal preference. Um, I have names equals, I, and I have type equals. I could also say names are or name the type is. Uh, is and equal the equal sign and are are can be used interchangeably and I have a plot here and that is plot one will produce descriptive plots of the sample data there are a lot of other options as well so let's just run this and see what happens so I'm going to save it and run it okay let's look at what this is so the first part it tells me exactly what time and uh, date I ran it on it says that my input reading terminated normally. And here's uh, a number of uh, descriptives about reading it in. It says I have 164 observations, six dependent variables, uh, zero independent variables. Okay, I haven't really defined a model, so that's fine. It tells me a little bit of information about some default settings on estimators. It provides me with missing data patterns. I actually don't have any missing data. Um, and then it tells me here uh, the proportion of data present and some sample statistics. It gives me my means and correlations. And then here it has, gives me means and variances and skewness and kurtosis and a lot of other things. I do have plots, which I'm not going to go into right now. But if I wanted to, that's where I would access them. All right, so the reason for looking at the basic is to make sure you've read your data in properly. And I'm going to go to this particular document. And you can see that here is a document where that compares the output from M plus to output from SPSS. Whether you use this document, whether you prepare something like this, or whether you just compare the output from M plus to the output from SPSS. Means should match means, standard deviations, squared should equal the variances, and the end count should be equal. This is a very important first point of check when running M plus because it's very often the case that the data step has errors that you need to repair before you move on. All right, we're right at about 13 minutes, so I'm going to stop this video at this time, and we're going to talk about the regression in the next video.